Welcome back everybody or just welcome if you're new to the channel and to a new ship spotlight. I'm DarkR717 and today we're going to be taking a look at not just one ship but a series of ships that I feel are one of the best in the Star Citizen universe to offer a variety of play styles and options. That hull would be the Aegis Vanguard series. Before we get into it though, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Help me out with the YouTube algorithm to get the videos out there to more people as hopefully we'll be one day hitting the 5,000 subscriber mark. If just a small portion of the 86% of viewers not subscribed hit that button, we'll hit 5,000 in no time. I also personally thank anyone who does hit the subscribe button as it means a lot to me and adds a larger audience that are eligible for our giveaways. And if you want to find out how to get entered into our giveaways, details will be at the end of the video. When discussing versatility today and variety, obviously, I'm not talking about gameplay loop versatility, but actual combat versatility. As all four of the Aegis Vanguard series are a military heavy fighter based variant. When it comes to ships that offer this wide range of combat playstyle, I truly believe the Vanguard do rule the field. The Vanguard is offered in a total of four variants, all built on the same hull. This hull to me is very reminiscent of the F-14 Tomcat I grew up with in the 80s in movies like Top Gun. And yes, I know that really just aged myself, but please, don't remind me. It has a cool sweep wing design with twin tails that create a sleek but yet menacing appearance due to its size. Though technically all the variations are multi-crew ships, it is very easy to solo one of these and not really lose out on much. The four variants in this hull are the Hoplite, which is the dropship, the Sentinel, which is an interdiction variant, the Warden, a heavy fighter, and the Harbinger, a bomber variant. Though built within the same hull, each has a unique and specific role that it plays and covers. The stock loadout for each is specific to its role and only has a minimum of duplication. As a series, they all do share a common description in that they're all a combat career-oriented ship. The ship itself is size 3 got a max crew of two, its length is 48 meters, its width is 40 meters, its height is 9.5 meters, and they all have a quantum fuel capacity of 2,500 liters. Though similar, one difference you're going to see is that all have the SEM speed of 171 meters per second, an afterburner speed of 1,022 meters per second, and a hydrogen capacity of 390,000 liters, except for the Warden which this will actually differ in only by a slight amount. Its SEM speed is actually 169 meters per second, afterburner of 1116 meters per second, and the hydrogen capacity is 405,000 liters. This difference is extremely slight and really does not change the feel of the Warden over any of the other variants. Stock components do vary between the different models though, with the Hoplite and the Warden coming stock with two size 2 grade C full stop military shield generators, two size 2 grade C Maelstrom military power plants, two size 2 grade C Arctic military coolers, and one size 2 grade C crossfield quantum drive. The quantum drive is actually rated at 20 million kilometers in 2 minutes and 5 seconds, which is definitely a reasonable time for any quantum. The Harbinger though is going to differ and it's going to be loaded out with 2 size 2 grade D secure shield military shield generators, 2 size 2 grade C turbo drive military power plants, 2 size 2 grade B permafrost military coolers, and 1 size 2 grade B Jaeger military quantum drive which is rated at about two minutes and two seconds for 20 million kilometers. It's a slight increase over the cross field. Both are very competent. Of course, I'm always gonna prefer an XL1. The Sentinel is also going to have a different loadout due to its nature as an interdiction ship, and it's really built around stealth right out of the hangar. It's gonna be equipped with two size two grade B shoot stealth shield generators, two size two grade B gamma max stealth power plants, and two size two grade B heat sink stealth coolers. It's going to also come with a different quantum drive being the size two grade C Nova stealth quantum drive. Now you're going to see the largest difference right here because that's rated at 20 million kilometers in about four minutes and 34 seconds. It's a definite diminishment in quantum performance though necessary for the sake of maintaining the stealth attribute. I also find that even bumping this up to a grade A, you're not really saving anything more than about six seconds in time. So swapping it out really is not gonna make a huge difference. 
While all the stock loadouts for components are well put together and more than competent for the roles they play, you can of course always do some improvements to increase performance. Replacing any components on the Harbinger, Warden, and Hoplite with grade A military or industrial components will absolutely boost its ability. The one difference is with the Sentinel and the need for that stealth. When it comes to interdiction, stealth is a key factor in this gameplay. Though you can move the stealth components up to a grade A, but replacing them for an industrial or military version is going to really hurt where it counts with the Sentinel. As for the weapons, the loadouts are very similar in that they offer four fixed nose guns that cannot be gimbaled and a single large nose gun that stock comes as a gimbaled size 4. Add on to that a rear turret on all models that can be manned by a crew member. These will all be size 2 dual turrets with the exception of the Harbinger which has a size 3 dual turret. The size 4 weapon on the Hoplite and the Warden are going to be stocked with a Revenant Ballistic Gatling Gun. While the Sentinel has a stock Attrition 4 laser repeater and the Harbinger has a stock C-788 ballistic cannon. The size and capabilities of these guns are all the same for each variant and are all outfitted stock very well. Though personally I do tend to change the ballistics over to laser repeaters to keep from having to reload. Of course the option is always there to remove the gimbal as well and go all fixed up front. As for the four fixed nose guns, each model has a unique stock weapon. The Hoplite utilizes four BRVS ballistic repeaters, the Sentinel has four ATVS distortion repeaters, the Warden has four MVSA laser cannons, and the Harbinger has four CVSA ballistic cannons. I do tend to replace these on all models with either a full set of GVSR laser repeaters or a mix of two GVSR and two ATVS disruption repeaters for that mix of laser and distortion for a little better performance. This is a personal preference though that I find does very well. The Vanguard offers the ability to really customize it to your own style though. The turrets will differ between model as well with the Hoplite and Warden outfitted with the dual size 2 Sawbuck Ballistic Repeaters. The Sentinel is going to have the dual size 2 Sucker Punch Distortion Cannons and the Harbinger comes with the dual size 3 Jericho Rocket Pods. Now with these I don't personally change out the turrets as I rarely have another crew member on board to utilize the equipment. But if you're going to be having an extra person on board, I tend to find that the rocket pods are very ineffective and low shot count, which really puts me in a place where I would recommend changing them out for a CF337 or an attrition 3 laser repeater. The other variants have well equipped turrets and don't warrant being swapped out unless you have a crew member that will be manning it and has a personal preference over what's installed. Missiles are going to differ slightly between each model with things such as the Hoplite having a mix of 8 size 2 missiles on board. When you look at the Sentinel and the Warden, they're going to be outfitted with a total of 12 missiles that are 8 size 2 and 4 size 3, all the way to the Harbinger that also has 8 size 2 and 4 size 3 and the 3 size 5 torpedoes. These are going to be a mix on all of them between the Arrestor 3, the Ignite size 2, and Dominator size 2 missiles on each model. So what really makes this a top level heavy fighter and not something like the Ares Ion? Well, that's easy. The Vanguard series, even though it is a larger ship, has a little better ability to really take on the small light fighters. As looking at the Ares, it really has a natural weakness to them. Though it is possible to beat them in an Ares, I find the Vanguard actually performs better against them. One reason it has the stock gimbal on the nose that can offer some aim assist in staying on target with them. Two. I feel as though it is capable of tracking and turning a bit better than the Ares to follow the target as they tend to enjoy jousting back and forth. It does have maneuverability that is common with heavy fighters, so it's still slower, but the slight improvement over the Ares is very noticeable. That, plus the ability to upgrade the majority of them to the military grade A components, really adds on to and builds upon its toughness and resiliency. These really are virtual flying tanks. Easily capable of jumping into any fight, it can run the entire gamut of bounties from certifications all the way to ERTs, or otherwise known as extreme risk target bounties. You can easily use the Vanguard to transport you to new locations to run cave and bunker bounties, or even just do box delivery missions with it. When you look at them individually and what they offer, there is a distinct difference between them. The Hoplite being the dropship offers the least capable model with no internal bed to log out from, Though it does have drop seats for an additional 6 personnel, unlike most dropships though that have a wide egress, the Hoplite is hampered by its one small access point on the rear of the ship. 
The Sentinel offers the ability to interdict through the use of its disruptors and installed EMP. The ability to bring a fleeing ship to a halt to be able to take your target down, or even in the future, take them alive is where this will shine as well as in the e-warfare type of gameplay and environment. The Warden is just straight up a bare knuckle boxer, built to deal and take damage and one ultimate outcome of destroying the target and shredding it down to as small of a pieces as possible. And then you have the Harbinger. Well, the name implies what it is. It's the bringer of death. In the form of a brutally tough exterior with the ability to precisely hit its side side torpedoes on most targets. Each variant has its own specialty and finding the one that best suits your style is simple. In all the different models, they have an ease of flight and simple responsive controls which make this ship easy to fly for even a novice pilot. For a novice pilot, it does also offer the ability of a little more toughness to take a hit as they hone their skills in dogfighting. Its availability as a pledge is only open at certain events and sales throughout the year but all can be acquired in game. The Hoplite's going to be 3,104,200 AUEC. The Sentinel, 2,012,000 AUEC. The Warden is 3,387,800 AUEC. But that one can actually also be rented at Vantage Rentals in Lorville for 101,634 AUEC for a single day. And of course, the Harbinger, which is 2,050,500 AUEC. All can be purchased at New Deal in Lorville. So the chance to purchase these in-game is always available and it's not overpriced at all with the exception of the Hoplite which as a over 3 million AUEC dropship I feel is a bit more than worth spending in-game. As pledges they start at 235 US dollars for the Hoplite, 260 US dollars for the Warden, 275 US dollars for the Sentinel, and 290 US dollars for the Harbinger when they are actually on sale which after the current Xenothreat event, they're gonna not be seen again until most likely Invictus in 2022. In summary, I feel the Vanguard series is truly the most versatile and capable heavy fighter out there. Its ability to provide options based on playstyle and capabilities make this a go-to in the heavy fighter arena. Most people I know that have them love them, including myself, which I will say out of them all, I would say I fly the hop light the least, and the Harbinger is my main go-to when doing combat solo. I don't really feel you can really go wrong with taking a Vanguard out for any mission. I hope you enjoyed the spotlight on the Aegis Vanguard series of ships and make sure to leave me a comment to let me know what your favorite of the four are. I definitely always love hearing from other players their thoughts and ideas on the different ships in game. Don't forget to get your entries in for February's giveaway which is going to be an Avenger Titan starter pack which will also include Squadron 42. Just subscribe here and leave a comment on any video and you're going to automatically be entered. You can also get an additional entry by heading over to Twitch and giving a follow over there where you can actually catch our stream every Wednesday and Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Or you can catch our weekly news and information podcast on Star Citizen every Saturday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time as well. You can also take part in our Twitch exclusive giveaways if you follow. And if you'd like to help support the channel, hit that subscribe button or the join button up top. With the join button at the top, you can get a membership for as little as 99 cents per month, or you can feel free to check out the Patreon or merch store. I personally want to say thank you to all of you as this is what allows me to continue doing the giveaways here on YouTube so that I can give back to the community. And thank you again for checking out the video, and we will catch you next time.